Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Richard Schnitzel, who is over in Connecticut. How are you doing, Richard? I'm doing very well. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And Richard has a process called Authent Authentious Automat Automation. Is that correct? Authentious? Authentious automation, you got it. Authentious automation, excellent. And we are going to talk today about sales automation uh, and how everything, when you automate things, you need to have that human touch to it. So, uh, so Richard, one of the one of the problems people have is is everybody loves the idea of automation and you know getting you know getting getting machines to do things and getting rid of mundane tasks and all of this. But the problem is when people go to do it is the underlying processes, et cetera, haven't been defined properly, or you're looking at it from a particularly insular point of view. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, It's kind of like being a kid in a candy store, right? There's so many different options. There's so many cool things that you can build and you just want to try a little bit of everything and then you get sick to your stomach and you're yeah. left with the repercussions. And there's definitely um, an aspect of it of you know, figuring out what do you really need, what do you really want, what really makes the most sense. Yeah. So talk about that process. I mean, how do you approach that process of really figuring out what makes the most sense, or where to start with with automation, and how to and how to even understand whether your current processes are in a, are, are sufficiently defined for you to actually automate them in the first place. Yeah. Great question. Uh, so let's start with a great litmus test that I always use when I'm talking about whether or not we should automate some aspect of what we're doing. If we start with the assumption that you know our process is good, we're happy with our workflow. Any automation that you implement into your business should do two things, improve the efficiency of what you're doing and improve the efficacy of what you're doing. Efficiency, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Mm -hmm. Am I doing this faster? Am I doing this slower? If it's faster, then great. We're and get more work done. Efficacy is the part that starts to get into kind of the heart of that conversation and peeling back the different layers because we're talking about is our outcome better than what it was pre-automation? And when you're trying to validate that, that's where you can start understanding one. So if your workflow and your process is defined enough, if you if you can answer that question, then you must have a fully defined process. And if you can't, my challenge for you is to start at 10,000 feet, as wide of a scope as possible of what you're doing, and then slowly get a little bit more detailed, a little bit more detailed, and a little bit more detailed. And if you picture yourself talking to a child of you know, how they always go like, do this, mm -hmm. well, why? Do this, yeah, well, yeah. why? Do this, well, why? That's part of walking through that process is just keep asking yourself why and don't do it in a vacuum. Do it with the other people on your team who are responsible for that so that you can create this whole, whole picture of what's going on. Yeah, no, that's great advice because let's face it, like sometimes people will build a process and they'll build it to their own advantage without mm -hmm. really looking at the impacts on others. So the impacts internally, I guess of most of all, though, is the impacts externally. Say, for instance, we're talking about sales automation. Uh, we really have to look at it through the prism of the person on the receiving end of that automation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's kind of like the oldest complaint about automation in the book is that nobody wants to be you know, 12 numbers deep in a phone tree or be getting mm -hmm. emails for a product that they just bought three weeks, you know, asking them why they didn't buy the product. That's the, the bad versions of it, but you know, it's automation has come such a long way that we really do have the opportunity to do things in our sales process because we know that something happened with our interaction with the client, not because we think that. And when we do insert a person into that process, being able to give whoever that is all of the information that we know about who we're talking to in a way that they can understand it so that they can leverage kind of that knowledge that's getting pulled in all over the place to make that person's experience better. Yeah, yeah, so, so if you're thinking about doing, doing some level of automa uh, automation and particularly in your sales process, I mean, you call it authentic automation. And I guess that's the thing that people crave in their interactions with, 
with salespeople or with brands or whatever is they crave some level of authenticity that they can trust you in some way, et cetera. So how do you build that into a digital process? The way that I go about it is I think about always starting and ending with a person. Mm -hmm. So I don't want the, either the beginning point to not have a human touch or for them to just go off the deep end into a bunch of automation and have the possibility of never coming out. The power to me is when somebody comes in and they're, they're looking at a product, we can pull in everything and then we can set automatic triggers of when we should be going to get in touch with that person. My personal sales process is I have people book a 20 minute call with me on mm -hmm. my calendar. They answer a bunch of questions and that automatically comes into my pipeline. So when I get on the call, I need five minutes before that call to read through everything quickly. I know everything about them. I know exactly what's going to make that call a win for them. I know their company. I know their history. And we can have a really powerful conversation in 20 minutes. And then at the end of that, I put in the information that I learned. And there's a bunch of automation that happens before it gets to the next person in my company who's responsible for the next step. And you link those unique human interactions with automation in between to make everything flow that much better. Yeah. So basically what you're talking about here is, I mean, you're approaching it uh, in an intelligent point of view from uh, to begin with. But you're also looking to enhance the experience of the, the the customer. You're also, you're looking to, as I said, you're looking to enhance the experience. You're looking for this to be additive, to make the salesperson more, uh, more informed when they're engaging. So it's all it's all to make the to increase the experience. It's not just for your convenience. Exactly. Yeah. If my automation tomorrow stopped working completely, my clients would could have the same experience. It would be a little bit slower. It would be a little bit longer to get through everything. Maybe but not they, as consistent. It may be, right. We, we may, you know, instead of being, you know, 15 minutes after a call, getting in touch with you, you know, we may drop a couple emails and you have to have that awkward conversation of like, oh, hey, sorry, I got busy, I forgot, right? But the core touch points that need to happen we are always in control of, and then we're leveraging automation to make those touch points, as you said, better for my clients and a better experience for them overall. Yeah. So, so when you, when, when you engage with clients, I mean, how do you help them take those first baby steps? Because, you know, as, as we said at the beginning, it's very easy to be a kid in a candy store and go, okay, let's just eat everything at once, you know, and make yourself <laughs> sick. Uh, so how do you help people with where should they start? They should really start with the thing that causes them the most pain. And mm -hmm. the reason for that is uh, something called task saturation. Right? When, when you're in a business that could be benefited by automation because you, you have so much going on that you can't track it and you're trying to find something better, your brain is going in so many different directions that if I was to ask you to sit down and think through what your process is, you won't be able to do it effectively because I could also ask you what your name was and you would go, okay, hold on, let me finish my task and I'll get back to you, right? You're, you have mm -hmm. too much stuff going on. So if we're going to effectively have that conversation, we need to find those two or three things that if we solve them quickly and we just kind of got them off of your plate, you open up the mental capacity to then start really looking at your business. You, the expectation of just being able to start from zero and go immediately to 100 is unrealistic if we want this process to be effective. Yeah, because let's face it, at the end of the day is what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to take away, as you said, some of the major pain points, but but for the end result that it allows you to do more high value activities or to serve your customers in, in even enhanced ways. So it's not just get it off your plate, it's but it's free you up to be more effective. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so when the process is, when the process starts, I mean, it's particularly the one you're talking about with your authentic automation and you're saying like, you know, there has to be that people part in it. How do you help? How do you help companies with understanding at what points in the process should they insert the human element? It's weekly conversations with them about what's going on in their business. Yeah, we work with clients for three months to go through mm -hmm. every part of their business. And the first two to three weeks, we don't automate anything. 
we're nice. having a conversation about what what it is they do, why they do it, and who it is that's doing it in their organization. And starting at that 30,000 foot view, taking what their company looks like now, where they want to get to in the next six months to a year. So we have kind of a scope of scale. And then we start drilling down to different points in their business and getting the better, better detail of asking the questions, why, why, why? And we have that conversation you know, weekly. And mm -hmm. we also break down the business into three categories so that you can pull off chunks of understanding. So that's the sales process, which is everything up until client intake, client management process, which is everything that happens behind the scene to fulfill your product, whatever it is. And then the fulfillment process, which is actually giving that thing to the customer. So the customer facing and the customer non-facing part of providing your product. So uh, before, over the last couple of years, like digital transformation and automation and all of that, you know, there's a lot of people have talked about it. Um, a lot of companies have paid lip service to it, to be honest, because things were going well. So, you know, why bother? Um, but then we had the pandemic this year, and I think it caught a lot of people off guard who realized then that automation and digital transformation is no longer something. It's not a, it's not a nice to have now. It's an imperative. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you see 2021 as being the year of, of true digital transformation for many companies? Yeah, to your point, I, I think they're going to have to. Yeah, even in the past you know, six months, I've seen you know, the level of interest of companies of wanting to start the conversation and seeing other people do it successfully has kind of broken the mold. You know, I think it used to be you could kind of explain it away as like, oh, uh, you know, they're they're an outlier. That's not for us. They can go do that. We'll stay with our our core principles. And I think that so many people now have done it because they were forced to do it. And even if it was a little clunky, it went really well. And now they're just trying to fine tune that process. And everybody's slowly realizing that, yeah, now if they, if they don't jump on the ship right now, it's going to be far gone very, very soon. Yeah, because I mean, it's great on it's great and all to be able to like wander over to Richard's desk and fix something that's not working like directly with him or whatever, but that's never a scalable model. And then when you have something like had happened this year, um, suddenly your processes are all out of whack because you have those, um, you know, you have those human elements or those manual elements in there that you just never bother taking care of. And now they're really biting you. Yeah, exactly. You said it very well, you know, that old yellow over your shoulder. Hey, what happened? Mm. You know, we've lost that ability and we need to recreate something that will you know, resolve that and, and still give us that level of intimacy and interaction so that you can have valuable mm. conversations and, and get the work done. Yeah. And so what from a, from a consumer or customer point of view, what do you think the expectation is there? I mean, what do you think people want in terms of interaction with a company i mean they want it to be efficient they want it to be high value um but what do you think their expectations are and how can automation meet those expectations yeah i think that the expectations are that automation is fine but you need to be very clear about two things one what is automated and what is not right don't try mm -hmm. to hide the fact that you are using automation to make their experience better you, we all have Alexas and Google Home. Like we're mm -hmm. used to the fact that yes, automation has power. So just be upfront about that. And the second is always give them a way to get back to a human because automation works within a certain set of rules and life doesn't always play by those rules and you need an out. You need a way for somebody to say, hey, I just want to talk to a person. Answer 90% of what's going on but leave them a very clear path to that other 10%. And that solves most of the problems that I see with the expectation of consumers and interacting with your company and your company's automation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because there's, there's nothing more frustrating. You mentioned the phone tree earlier. There's nothing more frustrating is when you have 52 options on the phone, but your <laughs> actually issue is, is the 53rd one that's not there. And you're just right. like, I just want to talk to someone. Or you punch 49 and you really wanted 52 and now you have to listen yeah. to the whole thing all over again, right? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I think there's, a, you know, there you have to be smart in in how you do this. Here's one interesting question uh, that popped up last year that I, um, it always stuck with me is, um, 
Do you think that when somebody's engaging with with a brand, if there is an automation or if there is a bot, say, being used, do they have the right to know that they're not actually communicating with the human being, that they're actually communicating with uh, with something digital? I think they do. Yeah, I, I think that that's a core part of being authentic in the way that you're using automation. I think that the reason that people didn't do it is because for a long time there was a perception that maybe people would care negatively that they were talking to a bot. And I think that, you know, one of the things that has come out of this COVID experience is that people understand that it's not a negative anymore. Done correctly, it can be a huge positive. So why not, you know, use that as part of your marketing? Hey, look, we understand that you know, this is something that's going to make your experience better. This is this is what's going on. I think it gets back to that. You know, it's the negative of when you don't have the path to a person and you, all you have is automation that it really becomes an issue. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think it is something that people should be aware of because you should know who, you know, who you're who you're interacting with. And as you said, if it's a good, say it's a virtual assistant bot or whatever, if it's good, if it's well done, if it gives you the result, then you'll be happy. If it doesn't, you won't. And to your point, as long as you have a path back to the human. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you see as the challenges and slash opportunities for for businesses going into 2021? How can they really make a digital process and automation work for them next year? I think that the opportunity right now is that you can introduce automation into your business. And if it doesn't work perfectly well out of the gate that is okay with people we have been mm -hmm. given like this open yeah it's okay we understand everything's a little crazy we appreciate the effort where it used to be if you're going to do this you had to get it right the first time right? if there was an issue if there was something that we didn't catch or you know didn't work the way that you wanted it, that was a problem and we've lost kind of that that challenge and we can build and play and tweak and do it openly. And, and people are just appreciative of the fact that you're trying. So you know, it, it's really made it that much easier to have fun with your business and put some really cool things in place without that stress. Yeah, no, I think you're. I think you're absolutely correct. I think if you're up, up front about it, and I think baby steps, uh, as we said earlier, is like find find your greatest uh, point of pain. Maybe don't try yeah. and fix it all. If it's acute, maybe don't try and fix it all at once. Maybe fix you know fix a step at a time. But start to. Sh I think you really have to demonstrate the success of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, start with yeah, you know, start with automating your emails start with when somebody you know comes into your business as a, a new client send them you know a, a thank you and a here's what's going on in our company and connect them to you know whoever their point of contact is right something super small get the momentum going uh, automation as it is in most business like thrives on momentum right mm -hmm. if, you, if you can start moving forward and get a couple things working, then you can get a couple bigger things working, then you can get a couple bigger things working. And before you know it, you could have an incredible system behind what you're yeah. doing. And and I think today, I mean, the fact is that there's so many things that can be achieved today, like in our own, um, in our own CRM pipeline or CRM, we have a no code workflow automation engine. So the technology mm -hmm. is there for you to be able to automate. It's not, it's not so out of reach as it used to be. It's not that you um, and many times have to hire consultants and, and it's all very complicated. There's a lot of good tools, like I said, with the automatizer we have, where you can automate things where you don't even need technical resources involved. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's only getting better every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, yeah. the stuff that we can do right now in six months, it's just going to be that much better. Absolutely. Well, listen, Richard, this was great talking to you today. All of Richard's information will be below this video. But before we go, do please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what we do is help businesses automate by understanding what it is they do, how they do it, and why they do it, and creating the systems that drive the, the ideas that we've been talking about. 
Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, best way is website richardschnitzel.com. There's a link there to my calendar for a 20 minute call. If you're interested in talking more about automation or business in general, it's, I'm always available and happy to have a conversation with you about what's going on. All right, fantastic. Thanks very much, Richard. My name is John Golden. I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.